Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. First, a quick disclaimer that in this video, we are presenting a study that we found of interest. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. We recently had the chance to talk with Professor Joseph Bauer, one of the world's leading NAD researchers, to discuss his work. To provide some background, we will walk through a recent paper of his. Here is the paper, which looks at the effects that rapamycin has on the ratio of NAD plus to NADH in muscle cells. Rapamycin is an approved drug that has been shown to extend lifespans in mouse models, and a few studies suggest that it may also promote healthy aging in humans. Rapamycin is an inhibitor of mTOR, which has wide-ranging effects on growth and metabolism across tissues. However, it remains unclear exactly how rapamycin affects longevity and diseases. Maintaining a redox balance is necessary for optimum cellular health and may be compromised over the course of natural aging. NAD Plus has diverse roles including energy metabolism and signaling through enzymes such as PARPs and sirtuins. But we are looking at the left side of this diagram for this video, where the NAD Plus and ADH ratio in a given cellular compartment represents the redox state, which is influenced by and in turn regulates metabolic activity. A decrease in the NAD plus and ADH ratio, reduced cellular NAD plus levels and increased NADH have all been observed in aging. Once NAD has been reduced to NADH, the cell has two major ways to reoxidize back to NAD plus. The mitochondrial electron transport chain and lactate dehydrogenase, which generates lactate. When cells are in culture, they do not have a functioning transport chain and so the only mechanism available is the lactate dehydrogenase. Rapamycin has been shown to decrease lactate production in cultured cells, raising the possibility that it can also shift the NAD redox balance. In this study, the authors investigated the effects of rapamycin on NAD plus and NADH redox status in cultured cells and in old and young mice to gain a more complete understanding of the mechanisms by which rapamycin may influence mammalian physiology. First, they looked at the effects of rapamycin on cultured C2-C12 cells. C2-C12 cells are a line of mouse muscle cell. Normally, when cultured because of the lack of electron chain support, the cells will build up NADH at the expense of NAD. However, when rapamycin was applied, we can see that the NAD plus to NADH ratio was higher. The top row shows for the myoblast, the original state of the cells, and the bottom row after they have differentiated into myotubes, which is a kind of muscle cell. In each case, we can see that the NAD to NADH ratio is improved by rapamycin. And here we see images using a technique called optical redox imaging. This measures the fluorescent intensities of NADH and FP, which directly matches that of NAD plus to NADH ratio where FP is oxidized flavoproteins. We can see that NADH is lower with rapamycin. As NADH is lower, the FP to FP and NADH ratio increases. Here are similar images using ex vivo mouse muscle cells from aged mice, where again we can see that the improved NAD to NADH ratio in the second column. So in summary, the studies suggest that rapamycin favors a more oxidized NAD to NADH ratio and improves ATP availability, most likely by reducing its demand for biosynthetic processes. The study provides insight into the potential mechanism by which rapamycin influences the aging process and points to redox imbalances as an indication that can be targeted using rapamycin to improve health and longevity. I hope that you found the video informative. We will be releasing our interview with Professor Bauer soon, where we go into more detail on many topics related to NAD. Please stay tuned. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you for your kind support. I wish you all well, and we'll speak to you again soon.